Here we go, making good time on this arc subclass run for Solo Flawless Ward's Ruin. I just need to make it to the final boss. I think we can all I think we can all resonate with this. This video is going to entertain the idea of running a solo Wallard's Ruin on a different element other than the meta, which is Solar or Strand for this particular dungeon. So, I wanted to run it without Restoration, or Devour for that matter, and see how the dungeon feels without those two OP healing buffs that we get. As you can see, it wasn't a solo Wallard's Run, so I'm not going to advertise it as such. There was one death on a cliff. And I've just showed you that. I did not die one time on any of the boss fights. Which says to me that the build that you see before you is good enough for most players to get a Soul Flaws on an Arc Warlock if Arc Warlock is your thing. Right? Because I know the artifact mods are Solar, Solar, Solar. A bit of, bit of Stasis. Strand's always good anyways. So why are people, you know, why would people want to use anything else? Well, you might be fatigued of running different elements. And there are people that are fanatic, fanatics about different elements on a different on a particular class. Like you got your shape by the mains, you got your strand titan mains. Arc Warlock though is secretly still good, and you'll see the damage that we just put in. No debuffs, by the way. That's no debuffs at all, like what we would have on Solar that we revitalize and blast, and that's really good damage. So we're using the Vesper of Radius build. That enhances rift energy when surrounded by enemies. I'm not going to go into the percentages of what that is because it's on dim for you to, from, uh, for dim to tell you that. Um, but basically, this is just entertaining the idea of, of a different build, going a different way about it, and, and still getting a decent solo clear. Obviously, just shy of a solo flawless. It's, it's based on a technicality because I fell off a cliff. So what? Right, I'm still gonna. I'm not gonna redo the full run just because of that, because uh, I'm busy wanting to do other things. So, it's really good for capping the scorn points. Obviously, once you cap two, you enhance your DPS, which generally we are getting to. Uh, and we're enhancing it with using Anarchy. I used Anarchy on my last clear on the Titan. Which gave me the idea for this video, really. And it inspired me because someone had mentioned that they'd run Warlock on the Vesper Radius. And I know about this build because I used it in the past. But it, it, never, come, it never crossed my mind about using this. I just automatically ruled everything out other than Solar or Strand when this dungeon east initially came out. So like, what's the point in running anything else? Because you need so much health regen um, that... Why would you run anything else? I've got a theory why it is like this, which I can, I can talk about after. But in terms of this first boss fight, it really doesn't matter what we run, but we are going to make sure that we save rifts for the scorn cap points. For the blights, a tip is if you can't find your third blight, pay attention to the red markers. Do you see the red markers on screen? That tells you where you're taking damage. Those red flags... Right, there's a, sorry, red red arrows. You, that will give you a clue where the final blight is. If in doubt, emote. Someone asked me about this the other day. They're on PS4. They can't shoot the blights. God help them, because field of view on PS4 is 55. Field of view on PC. Well, I don't know about PC, but on PlayStation 5 is 105 max, I think. So somebody running an FOV at 55, trying to shoot blights in a cage, is cruel to them. Because your character is bigger on the screen and the field of view, hence the, it's in the name, is more narrower and you can't see the blights. So emote if you're struggling with blights, that's a tip for it. But with this build it's going to work really well for this boss because you're going to get all the damage that you want. You know, It's not that... This boss fight isn't that long. It's six, seven minutes, no matter what you really do. So it doesn't matter unless you're doing a speed run, you're, you're trying to achieve world records and stuff. Then it doesn't matter what you do really for this boss fight, as long as you are putting out, you know, putting out a decent amount of damage. But 
it worked out really well with our scar signal, which I've now finally crafted with the enhanced perks on it. Enhanced overflow, enhanced control burst, which is quite clearly the best roll. It is slice. I don't recommend slice on anything other than a hunter. Uh, the slice just isn't worth it unless you're on a hunter. All right, so if you play all three subclasses, or just craft two different scatter signals, one with sli enhanced slice, one with enhanced um, overflow, because they're in the same column. But the enhanced overflow will work on any class. Slice will only work so well on a hunter. On over the other two classes, not as good, in my opinion. If Slice worked with Weller Radiance, then we're talking about something else, but that it doesn't, which is a shame, because I know, I know Weller Radiance is a super, but sometimes it has weird interactions with weapons in the past and has done, like, you know, working with Lunar Boots and stuff like that. Whereas Lunar Boots is objectively a riff based thing but it works really well so you see what i'm saying so anyways getting to the second boss fight we've cut all the traversal out of this video because there's no point me showing you any of that you're not going to learn anything from that you should know where to go and what to do in the maze and the, the the jail cell thing i think the dungeon's been out long enough now for it to be standardized that you know this information already elsewhere you've already you've already got that information if you haven't then click on a previous video that i made about this dungeon or watch someone else's if you want, if you need that information on the puzzles and stuff, the maze and stuff. So, our loadout, I haven't talked too much about it, with the hand cannon. So, we use Nation of the Beasts with enhanced vault shot and enhanced dragonfly, which this role is actually doing really well in this. Uh, originally, I was going to do enhanced dragonfly, enhanced explosive payload. And, I've, and then that didn't work as good. The reason for this is because is explosive payload is overkill when enemies are at a base level. So if they're, if they're at your level or lower, you don't really need explosive payload for everything. Sometimes it is better running a vault shot or in, well, incandescent or both if you can. Obviously with the solar hand cannon you can. Um, but Vault Shot worked out the better pick because the ads are weak enough to die to Vault Shot. In the GM environment, Vault Shot is still good, but just won't proc as good. Therefore, Explosive Payload is the better pick. So you can see that there's a... Depending on what activity you do, depends on what role you use. That's We crafted weapons. They're cheap to craft now and get them to level 16. Have multiple variants if you want. That way you're not losing the sentence shards of weapons. I recommend that. Like a good example of this is the solar rocket launcher from Last Wish. Have a bait and switch one. Have an explosive payload, uh, explosive light version of it. it. You can. It's essentially free. I know the cost cause, but cause a cause. So you can have multiple god rolls and different variants of weapons because we can't swap these perks out for free. So that's the way of to go about that. So obviously, I've run this dungeon already on solar. What's the differences for this fight from Solar versus what I'm on now, Ark? Is there anything I needed to change? Well, there is. I needed to change about killing snipers at the back of the map. So I'll just go through all, all, all of the spawns of this map so that you are fully clear of exactly what's going on. So you've got the left and right wing back of the map. Then you've got the center mid. The center mid will have infinite spawn and take a, taken acolytes that are on a timer. Okay. At the back of the map, you will have infinite scorn enemies. But not all of the enemies are infinite. So the snipers... So there's two snipers spawn left. Sorry, back left and back right. There's also a Vex Minotaur that spawns left and right in mid. The enemies I've just mentioned... Right? Those eight enemies... Well, two, two Minotaurs, four Snipers. Those enemies in particular, right, they're not infinite. You can control that spawn. Now, because I didn't have infinite Solar Restoration, I was getting sniped a lot. Whereas on my Solar run of this, I would ignore pretty much all enemies. Apart from the Taken Acolytes, I would, I would actually make sure that I kill them uh, before I start DPS. So with, the, when, with my playtesting with the Arc run... 
the snipers were killing me at the back of the map. There was a chance of it. There was risks of it. I saw it through, through my playtest. So, when we get four relics, we need to go and kill the snipers. Two snipers will spawn every time the mini boss. Uh, every time you get a. Every time you get the orbs in mid, that's when they spawn. So when Imminent Wish finishes after you've killed your mini Scorn Captain and Biting Winds goes away, that's when they spawn. So, basically, once we've got four orbs, I would go back left, back right and kill the snipers and they won't respawn during DPS, which is huge because they were bothering me on, on certain DPS plates. And I'm talking about something very particular particular you probably a lot of you probably won't even know what I'm really talking about but I'm comparing this to the solar run to the solar run I didn't need to do that there are some rituals I followed similar to the solar run like waiting for the taken acolytes killing all the eyes apart from one or two right but I did find that because I'm running arc soul sometimes arc soul would kill the final blight by accident and then spawn in a mini scorn captain when I didn't need him which was a huge issue. So my my way to combat that was don't look at the final blights when I've got Rift up. We're going to pop Rift first, then put in last orb. Then it's DPS is two anarchy, pulse nade, and then super. We're you we're using the standard Chaos Reach, not Geomags, and I'll explain to you why I'm not using Geomags after the DPS is finished. The rest of the damage is just fusion. Then we get a reload on Anarchy, Bite and Wind, Bite and Cold can go up a little bit. We're waiting on Rift Energy. I'm paying attention to the left hand corner for my Rift. Because I want a Rift for Plate 2. Same thing. Two Anarchy, then all scatter signal. Remember, this is no debuff. There's no debuff here. It's just surges. We've actually lost our surges now. Right, so actually I'm not getting anything. But what's huge about the damage about this is that the pulse nade is adding so much more damage because we're jolting him. Right, then you've got your anarchy working in the background and then scatter signal that is now fully crafted properly. Right, so you get 16 shots. So I'm not really having to reload it that much. Right, we're going to get our super for, for played four, but I was a little impatient and should have stood on a little bit later than what I did. I do Actually, I do think I get my super. Yeah, I got my super. I don't get a lot out of it, though. That was the trouble. So, lost a little bit of damage there. So, we ended up supering him on plate one and plate four. I do my plate rotation anti-clockwise. If we were to look forward to the boss from the backside of the map, I go anti-clockwise. That's just my routine. If you want to go clockwise, you can do it. Right? It's up to you that way. So... We ended up supering him twice because of the amount of intellect we get back from Scatter Signal. Because Scatter Signal's giving you massive chunks of super. That's why you'll see hunters who are able to like do multiple supers per rotation. Um, this, the, I, I faced a problem when building out for this because I wanted to initially do this with Geomag Stabilizers. So I would start with Vesper Radius. Yeah, and then when it comes to DPS, do a surge switch on to Geomax, like I did for the first boss, and I will for the final as well. We didn't do that because I, what I found was it was more important just to stay alive on each plate with Vesper Radius Rifts. Right? I also come up with the idea of maybe free plates of Vesper of Radius, Vesper of Radius damage, no super. Save super for plate 4, then hot swap to Geomax. That didn't work out any better than what it, what you see here. Really, the damage was... The, 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 the payoff wasn't that much different. Like, I know I'm on, what, I now. Ge generally, I can get to G. Just my damage was slightly lacking. Maybe not as many fusion rifle shots hit, you know. Uh, I didn't fire as many as, as I should have done. Boss knock on me back, stuff like that. There's, you know, there's real world stuff that can happen. You can't just say, well, this is my DPS on paper, so therefore this is the DPS I will do in the game. No, because there's real-world events that happen in the game that may go against you. But no, so it didn't really make much of a difference running the Geomax, because then, therefore, you're not getting a rift every, um, every plate. And having a rift up 
well, not every player, but three out of the players, I think. Three out of four, I think I had a rift. That's more valuable than having a higher damage super. That, in the end, it's not going to give you much more damage, if anything, by the time you do all, all the swaps and all that stuff. One thing that would have increased damage is, because I had concussive damper on my chest plate, right, so obviously we were, we, resistance, we were using double arc resistant concussive for this fight. My resistance is different tailored to each fight, but I was using um, concussive dampener to, you know, help save against stuff, but what could have given us a bit more damage and pushed the damage out a little bit would have been a charged up on the chest player but this means we're sacrificing concussive dampener for that which generally you should never sacrifice concussive dampener for that but what it was they cheat there was a cheese where you could run charged up then swap off charged up and keep more armor charges they patched that when they patched it two seasons ago i think it was right so it's a shame because that's what i used to do for ghost of the deep I rock charged up, and then when he got to DPS, I would um, rock a concussive dampener and then still keep my extra 15 seconds of damage, which we can't do that now. You're just stuck with three armor charges if you run the correct resistances, which is a shame, because you, you do end up running out of it quicker than you'd think, especially on this fight. On the other bosses, it's not much of a problem. You never need more than 30 seconds of damage. So two armor charges would be sufficient. You wouldn't even need three, but this fight's a little different. Uh, like I said in the previous video, I already knew this without testing it. I'm on about back then. I only tested Anarchy on the final boss, which I knew Anarchy was really good on the final boss, but I knew that Dragon's Breath is better for this fight than Anarchy is. Because Anarchy just doesn't have... Well, it, it hasn't got any mods going for it. There's nothing. There's not a problem with Anarchy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that there's no arc mods up. Yeah. So that's why Dragon's Breath will out damage Anarchy, really, because because of the solar mods. And then your chances are, if you run a Dragon's Breath, then you're probably going to run a solar subclass. Therefore, you've got Revitalize and Blast. Therefore, being able to debuff boss. So there's all these things. I have no access to a debuff. Do you, know, do you realize how much of a difference that will make when solo if you don't have the debuff? Like revitalize and blast. Obviously, we could put a tractor cannon on, but what, what would the point of that be? There would be zero point of, of a tractor for something like this. So, yeah, like I said, following the same routines, you know, um, clearing, taking acolytes in mid, they are the key. Because if you've noticed, they drop special ammo. I don't know what it is, but I think they have micromanage certain enemies to drop certain ammo types and it definitely feels that way especially in this fight acolytes if you kill them they they generally just drop special everywhere and you kind of need special on the floor because your 20 your 18 fusion rifle shots ain't enough you're gonna run out by player two player three so don't jump on player two right away let your rift energy come up if you are gonna do such a run We'll start with Rift first, then Double Anarchy. Obviously, it caps out at two shots. You never do more than two. But you do another... T I, I sometimes do another one or two halfway through damage. Time's run out. So, one critique to this build was that it wasn't stopping the Ogre enough. That's why Dragon's Breath, Ammo Dragon's Breath is a little better for this fight, because it stops him. The ignition effect, especially if you're using fragments with it, will stun him a bit better. So, this build, I, this build, I wouldn't give it like for DPS. I would give it like a seven or six out of ten because he has got a survivability per player, but the damage is just nowhere near the same as other subclasses because we have access to no debuff and there's no stopping power with my weapons to stun lock him. So it loses points. But in terms of everything else that we do in the run, getting up to the boss, it's fantastic. You don't need infinite restoration to do this dungeon. That's what the whole idea of this video is. You can still work around it with certain exotics that we have. Bear in mind, I know Vesper is like 
sort of off the cusp, right? People, some people still don't really know about it, but he is super strong. Uh, I'm aware of that. But I'm just saying there's there's ways and there's ways and means around things. Um, going back to what I said earlier about they made the dungeon like this on purpose, right? So that you're gonna use a heal and subclass. But there's not just solar in the game. There's mo many elements. So the, how they've combated that is by use by making an exotic that gives you devour. Which ideally in this run, that's what I wanted to use. But I haven't got catalyst for the for the um, for the exotic that you get. So um, I wanted to get the catalyst before I use it. So that would have been better in this run. Having de devour on an arc warlock would be so good. I just haven't got the catalyst for the gun yet. I'm working on it, doing all the D spells, level two, level three, and all that stuff. Once I do all that, I'll use it in some run because you can. It opens up loadouts, is what I'm saying. So you can you can do a stasis run on this, as long as you're using that void crossbow. Right, then anything goes. You can do it. It just means obviously you're not going to have access to like dragon's breath, anarchy, damage over time stuff. But that's fine. You'll be able to make it work still. Um, you just have you, you have to have your best heavy in slot, whatever the weapon, you, whatever the boss you're going up against. And scatter signals super strong. Um, I suppose that means you're running double special, though, right? Because the void crossbow is double special. So I'm not a huge fan of that fact. Um, if it's if if that's counted as a, um, is it a special weapon? Because I'm gonna check. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna sound silly here. So yeah, it is. So it's taken special ammo. See, I I have no, I have, I don't know anything about Berry Bloodline. Nothing about it at all, really. I know that it grants devour. So yeah, I wouldn't be a fan of like doing a double special run because they nerfed that whole thing. So I'd have to have a think about how that would go when you use a Berry um, Bloodline and, and like say a Stasis or a, or even a, you know Stasis or something like that with devour. How that loadout would work. I'd have to have a look at that. So yeah, from here on out, it's literally just obviously rinse and repeat. Um, there's not much other tips I can give you about this run, to be honest. Uh, because I, I sort of give them all in the previous videos, to be honest. But that is the biggest thing, is clearing out the snipers on the left and right when you get four orbs. You're gonna the the will spawn at two as well, like now, um, and it, it, it's a good idea to kill them anyways because you're gonna get special up here, which is good because you want to save all that special in middle. You want to be walking around with full ammo when you're in mid, because you won't end up picking up the bricks. You see, therefore you stockpile an ammo in mid. So don't just ignore ads on left and right. You know so. With the scorn captain as well, I always deal with him on left, and I said this in the pre in the previous video. I always do that. The reason for that is because the guy on right is awkward. Now a, another guy commented, a good guy, right? He's probably a decent fella, but he said that right side captain was better. So I had a look at that, and I can confirm t for me at least it isn't, which I had suspicion it was. The captain's weird because he's in the little castle on the right hand side. He just sort of wanders around and doesn't put up his second trap. Now I know that they fixed this. I know there was a bug where they weren't putting up the second trap. That isn't entirely fixed though. Because if there is a random RNG element to them putting up the second scorn trap. Anyways, by design, by default, that's how it works. But what I'm saying t about that is, is it's awkward. From analysing the scorn captain, I can see that if you shoot him too heavily or pressure him too heavily, he won't put up the trap. I've also noticed if you hide behind cover, he won't put up his trap. The only times when he puts up his trap is when you sort of shoot him and he's looking at you. Or maybe you're lo just looking at him and you're not shooting him. That's when he'll do it. If you stand too close to the Scorn Captain, his AI pattern is to just shoot you with Lord of Wolves, because that's the gun he has. I think he has Lord of Wolves. 
Actually, don't quote me on that, but he's, he's got some gun like that. His AI pattern is to either stomp or, or blast you with the solar. Like, I'm on about within a three meter radius. It's very hard to explain what I'm trying to explain to you right now. So, tips are don't stand too close. Shoot them only a little bit. Don't have, don't pressure them too heavily, and you'll get the second scorn trap. If he puts his trap down early, and the debuff starts right away, you've got to melt. Just go in with the melt. That's the look. There's good points for this loadout that way. Is that sticking with anarchy, hitting with scatter signal, you'll melt him quick enough. Which, which was a, a saving factor if that was to happen. Because sometimes that also happens as well. So like I say, yes, they fixed that bug, whatever it was at Christmas. But by design, it's still poor. It's a poorly designed mechanic because you are waiting for him to maybe put down a second trap. And if he doesn't, you're punished because you've got to do... If you just get one trap off him, you've got to do it three times total to get all your orbs. It's a nuisance. So I've already said what my suggestion is around the mechanic is to that, is that don't let him, don't wait for him to put a trap. It shouldn't be just that you wait for him. He should, when you kill a scorn captain, you should get two traps. Right, or make it so that one trap equals two orbs. But I don't think that's the answer. The answer is just to give us two traps when you kill him. I think they need to remove the RNG element of waiting for him to spawn a trap. Because this is a problem at the final boss as well. I've been watching a couple of runs of people where they're waiting for the scorn captain to put a trap up and he isn't. In the meantime, they're getting shot by Sions. And that results in a death. That's the biggest risk factor I see in the, in the Waller's Rune. The deaths. This is more prevalent at the final boss. This, this boss, it's not too bad. It's, it's not as bad because it's not a risk of death so much because you're at the back of the map. Nothing can really hurt you. The ogre can hit you, just don't jump. If you jump, you will get knocked off the side of the castle. Right, there's a death zone right behind me. So, try not to jump too much. Just single hop. That's it, if you want to. Or if you really want to jump, then make sure you're amplified and that you're nowhere near him. Like, he's hitting us here. He shouldn't be able to hit me there. So it's sort of messing up my rotation. That's fine, though. We'll melt the scorn captain. The other golden rule is always going... We bite and cold debuff. Always go at time six. Never go at time seven. It's the golden rule. You should never... You should never violate that rule unless you are super confident of getting back to the um, fire area to reset buff, to reset the debuff. Because if you go at time seven, if you do anything wrong or an ad gets in your way or you slip on the stairs or you get pushed by the boss, you're probably going to wipe. You will wipe at times nine. Because if you're at times and I'm walking up the stairs and you're not going to get there, it goes to times 10 quickly, and then you're dead. You wipe at times 10. So go at 6. I wouldn't say 5. Five's cutting you fine. But when you're standing in your trap, you should be looking at that debuff the entire time. Like, the entire time. Only thing on screen that you should be looking at is maybe if ads are surrounding you. If so, use a rift. If you haven't, then... Manage that risk as in there. You maybe just want to go and reset debuff and stay alive. If you haven't got rift. But if there's plenty of ads around you, you should get it anyways with Vesper. Which is the whole idea of this run. Is to run that exotic, of course. The hand cannon perform, like I said, really well with the vault shot. Would I run this in a GM, this hand cannon? Though? No. Well, I would run this hand cannon, but not with this perk setup, like I said earlier. It wouldn't be with this roll. Um... Vault shot in itself is a debuff. You can debuff enemies, so there, there is that. It's its own type thing. But it just doesn't do enough damage without explosive because you're under-leveled on a GM. You're minus 25. On a dungeon, I'm 20 over. You can cut, You can over-level dungeons. So I'm actually now 20 levels over the enemy. Right? 
well, it's actually higher than that, but I think it caps at 20. So, literally, Vault Shot's going to be really good. Because it, it's just going to melt everything, especially for Scions and stuff. It's going gonna, it's gonna to do that really well. Notice as well with how we play this. So, like, when you see your solar infinite restoration runs, they're all over the map. So, I have went through a learning process. Right, so let's 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 take me for a, an example of how this goes. So I've learned the dungeon with the meta initially, with infinite restoration solar because that's your go-to class to get your first clear. Right, so we've learned that. But when I start playing on a different element and try to solo it, then I learn some additional more information about the dungeon i.e. the sniper spawns. I didn't actually quite know how they worked. I do now because they were a problem to me. So, right, I've established the problem. What, what, when do they spawn and why? What controls that? Are they infinite? Because if they're infinite, I can't be bothered killing them, but they weren't. Well, that changes things because, like I say, it won't upset your DPS as much. You're still going to get void naded, but you can avoid that and you're standing in a rift. So it's fine. So it's an example of there's more to learn than just the meta. I'm trying to drill it home with people, but like there's some people that are so stubborn on it. They're just so like in the matrix of the meta that they don't really know anything else outside of that. They do, but they don't fully, fully understand it. It'll help you understand everything with the game, how how aspect, different aspects interact with certain interactions of different perks and exotics and stuff. It'll just give you a broader um, intelligence of the game by playing all three subclasses. It's a really simple thing. That's all you need to start doing. And if people are bored of D2 and you're somebody that says, oh, well, I'm bored of it, well, I am too, but if you're somebody who's playing one subclass and you're bored, mm, you're only playing 33.3% of the game. You're playing a third of the game. In my opinion, you're, you're not even playing the game if you're only main and a hunter. Now, there might be some people that say, well, I can't play other classes. Well, make time. That's your problem, not mine. Make sure that you are trying to play all three subclasses, especially if you really want to play the game, but you're bored, but you want to find a reason to play it. Well, here's your reason. Go make a Titan. If you've never made a Titan, go make a Warlock then. It's, it's, it's particularly with Hunter mains, I will say. I'm not being prejudiced too much, but it is mainly Hunter mains who are stubborn to go on a different class. I feel as well like a Titan mains open, to go and play other classes. I feel as though some Warlock mains are stubborn as well. I feel as though Titans are more... Like I'm, I am stereotyping here, but I feel as though Titans are, are the most open-minded people to go and play other classes. Hunters being the most narrow-minded, but like I say, I'm just stereotyping here. Don't take, don't take offense to it. I, I'm only really joking about it, to be honest. So with the final boss fight... We're going to be using the same loadout. The only changes is that we're using um, different surges because we've got a different weapon type on. We've got a kinetic weapon on now. So one kinetic surge, one... Sorry, one kinetic surge, two arc surges. Well, that's when we do our surge switch, of course. So we've got supremacy on, of course, fully crafted, which I'm okay with using. I understand it's a raid weapon, but technically it's not a raid weapon per se in terms of how you get it because you can get it by not raiding so they've blurred the line on what raid weapons are you know with the quest so anyone can get it it's on a weekly rotation yes right but you can still do it and then the Kali farm is really easy and you can still solo farm now if last wish is the weekly feature raid you can solo farm and it's actually easy again because dragon's breath if you pair Dragon's Breath with some braces, the gauntlets, you will then be able to actually easy solo killer, even without Transcendent Blessing mods as well. So, how are we going to do this without infinite restoration? Well, looking on the map, there's some, again, more information gained. There's some cool little spots you can stand. 
So on the right hand side and the le far right hand side and far left hand side, there's two good places to stand that avoid the boss entirely. And it's just you and Scions. We got two caps, which is fantastic. I didn't think he was going to spawn it. He just spawned it just before I killed him. And now we're going to do the uh, tricks. Tricks of all trades. Right? Look at this. We can DPS from plate two. When I saw this the other day, it blew my mind. Right? Are you seeing what's going on? I bet 90% I bet of you don't understand that, we, that you could do this. So we can DPS from plate two safely for plate one's damage, which means making DPS far safer. This will open up a lot of things with this dungeon now for me in terms of what I can run and stuff because of that. It's a nice, whoever found it, it's a neat little find, it is. So we were able to do a surge switch and then what the, the damage was is focusing on Curse Reach Geomax. So you can see the damage we've done. We, we actually bypassed the damage gate by, by a significant margin. That is crazy damage for no debuff. We're not even debuffing him. Okay? You know, that's competing with a debuffed Hammer of Sol. Like a Hammer of Sol debuffing a boss and then melting. That's competing with that damage. If not, maybe slightly more. That's crazy. Just to think about. So, it's shown you. I, I, this is why I wanted to run Curse Switch. I knew that it was going to be really good at this boss fight. Because this boss fight's based on you having a good super damage output. And we know Hunters are best in class for this dungeon. And they are. I think you can safely say they are. They've got Lucky Pants. They've got Celestial Nighthawk. They've got Malfeasance to pair with all this stuff. Right? They're easily the best class for it. But I was thinking, like, what's good about the Warlock apart from Daybreak and Weller Radiance? What else is there? Well, there's Nova, which is would also be a very good run, which I'm very nearly done a Void run instead of this. Oh, there's, 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 there's Ark Warlock, one of my favourite subclasses in the game. I said, well, how can I use him? Well, because someone said the other day about Vesper Radius, I was like, yeah, this will be fine to do. This, this should be fine. Which it did work out fine, to be honest. Like I said... Not wiping on any of the encounters apart from the cliff side. I think that's pretty good. If I was to run this back right now, I'll get the soul flaws right away. But what's the point? I've already got my soul flaws. It's fine. I've already done this, the actual solar flawless guide for Warlock, which I'm actually recommending the solar variant. I've done the Titan video guide, right? So then there's the Hunter left, which is going to be my actual run. This isn't the actual run, if you like. This is just me sort of messing around with Ark, showing you. So, on play two, I was waiting for this guy to spawn in the second trap. He didn't. But it is a good place to stand, behind that pillar over there. I, I w I've actually just said, no, I'm not getting that second plate. Because I don't have a rift. So, you see what I'm saying? I might have infinite rifts, but it's not healing the, amount, the entire time. Well, it's not infinite rifts. It's technically based on... If there's enough ads alive. So there's risk reward ratio with it. Same thing again, we can go to play three to do play two's damage. And the damage was good, but it was only six seconds because we missed the scorn trap because the damn scorn guy didn't put up his trap. I like I said I don't like a mechanic like this that is RNG based. It was it's because I'm hiding behind the pillar. He doesn't know where I am, so he's in his scout mode. Where is he? Like that sort of mode, like a Terminator or something. He's looking, where is it? Just put up your trap. But he's not doing it. It's annoying me. But luckily, because of how much damage we're doing, we're still meeting the soft gap. And this ends up being a solar two-phase still. Very easy solar two-phase. We end up actually losing a plate of damage and still solar two-phase, which is quite crazy. So, yeah, I decided my strategy changes a little bit from what I did on solar because of you know we can rift yeah when the captain spawns but you couldn't melt him to get his trap down right away and if you don't then you're only capping one point so it's just like well, what do we do then do we like sort of wait behind cover then anarchy and then wait for his trap and then he, by then it's too late 
ideally you just want him to get that trap down so that you double cap a point, you get rid of debuff, and then it's done. It was annoying. Right? It's not the subclass's fault, it's not my fault, it's just the AI pattern of these scorn enemies. They won't change it though, which will annoy me, because how many dungeon how many solar flawless dungeons well, how many dungeons have we had? And I've suggested changes since Forsaken and a lot of the changes I've suggested have never ever been looked at or implemented. They'll put the dungeon in and they'll just fix things that are unintended, but they won't make any like changes that they should mechanic wise or maybe like sort of ease them up. Just not ease them up, but just make them more routine based. I like routine based mechanics and everything is routine about this apart from the scorn captains. That's my only gripe with them. This is actually a really good place to stand. So if you don't have like restoration or something, standing behind that rock prevents the boss hitting you and it helps you to kill sounds very easy. So it's, it's 10 out of 10 for that. Like I said, we could pop a rift right now, but by the time we kill the captain and wait, the rift's gone. If the sounds are dead, which they probably are, then we're not going to get a rift to cap the point. So what we're going to try here is Anarchy 1, right? Maybe double tick him. Hopefully he puts up a point. Still waiting, still waiting. Going to have to rift now. And I don't think he did put up a cap point. Debuffs are five seconds, so I need to get the debuff away. The guy's not pushing, so I'll have to push. Yeah, so he only put one cap point up. So that this is going to be a wash. Damage-wise, and we're also weak. So this is actually the worst damage rotation that we end up doing. We actually don't end up meeting soft cap because we're too weak to push. Um, so we'll just let we'll just let Anarchy tick out, and we'll redo this phase. This will actually this will actually save damage anyways. Um, but it's just an ex a good example of the game just not wanting to give you what you want. Just put up the trap so I can do follow my routine. It's not doing it. That's when you one little thing going against you can result in another thing, and it's a good it's like a domino effect. And then you know DPS will start sooner than you thought. Then you're not in the right place to do DPS. Which, by the way, if you were confused on where I was going, you won't be confused in a minute. Because it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind where we do DPS from the next from the next phase. We're gonna prep some of the blights, not kill them all though. Not until we're ready. We're gonna take full advantage of all shot, which it is doing well. It is doing well. Like instantly killing a group of sounds in one shot is nice. It is quick, so I do like that. So this doesn't really matter what we do. I've decided just to melt him. We could go back to the strategy of melting both scorn captains, but that's better on solar because you, you're more mobile with your restoration. The, the weakness of Vesper Radius is that it's not mobile with your healing. So you've got to commit to a place and stand there, and that's it, right? So we're not going to do a surge switch, okay? We're going to do DPS from up here, which, yes, you can. So we'll do our double anarchy and then sniper. And we're going to try and meet the soft cap. Our goal is just to meet it, maybe exceed it if we can. That's fine, he's done it. Now jump off plate right away. You need to jump off before the boss gets shielded. Because if you don't, you will start the act, you will unintentionally start the next DPS plate. The main DPS plates, the, the three up top. So this can happen. So you need to jump off right away. If you're going to do this strat, you need to know the ins and outs of it. Because it's very easy to set off the next damage rotation and not realize you've done it. And I, it, it does happen to me. Let's see, it would do, because it's a new strat I'm trying out. It's just a case of jump off when you're supposed to. We'll do a surge switch now. Two anarchy, pulse nade. And then super. We didn't rift because we don't need to. Because we've got super resistance. And then we're going to jump down. We have got a surge. We've got two blocks of surge. But don't worry about it. The reason why I'm not bothered about start rushing the next plate. 
to take advantage of my armor charge is, is one only reason, and the reason is pulse nade. It's more valuable to have a pulse nade up for a plate than it is to have surges. The reason why is because you extend DPS when you kill the blights, right? The eyes. Well, because we've jolted him with a pulse nade and then we DPS him, it also spreads out to the eyes and extends damage. You're gonna see how much damage we do. It's fine. I didn't. I it blew my mind when I when, when I saw it first. So I was like, oh yeah, of course I'm jolting him. I was like, why am I getting more DPS? Oh, it's because of the eyes. So I wasn't doing anything different. It's just the fact that we pulse nade for every phase, which in fact jolts him, which means that it just ups our DPS time, which in turn is more damage than rushing to do surge damage. It's better to just do this. So look, we'll just get more damage damage numbers. So all the damage that we lost, yeah, with the other phases, right, we're making up for it now. Because he's nearly half HP and we've got another plate yet to do. So, you can see that this boss is generous for damage. It is. It, it is a generous boss and it's it, this boss doesn't have too much HP, I don't think. I'll, however, I might go back on that and, and have to think because Soul Operator... We do have solo operators, so I need to see what the damage is like without solo operator. So maybe a sol a non solo operator run needs to be done. Or for me to at least test it to see what it's like. Because it's not fair testing the dungeon on a solo operator because it's too OP. It is only fifteen percent, but it stacks with every single thing in the game. It's a global buff. So I I'm just saying I'd had at face value, how is this boss meant to be? How are these bosses meant to be in this fight, in this dungeon? Well, they're probably actually more tanky than you think. Because solo operator. So, the results are sort of off because of that. Same damage rotation. Heal and Rift, two anarchy, then just all sniper. Obviously try and get our crits. But we're going to exceed more than half. For the two phase, you don't need to get him to half, just above, because obviously you've got final stand. Just do all our damage, and that's our first plate of damage. Which is, all things consider, considered, that went well. There were some traps that we missed, but overall, like, that went well. The fact that we're on arc, we don't have everything going for us, we don't have infinite restoration. But like I said, the very bloodline... Devour run on Ark Warlock would have been better than this, I think. It's just what what do you pair it with? That would be the question for that run. So we're waiting on our rift. It's very important that we get a rift for the wizards. And get them jolted as well. It's quicker to kill them. Save a pulse nade for them if you if you must. Or a heal them, whichever. But don't fight naked. Don't what I mean by that, don't fight in the middle of the map. Without a pulse or a healing nade. Because you are asking to be killed. This is not... You're not meant to stand in the middle of the map. This is not where... You're, look at look at these broken pillars. Why have they put them here? At a, at a game designed point of view, why is the cover on this map? Think about it. Because well, you're meant to use it. I know you, you all on solar aren't using it. But if you're not on solar and you're not using devour and stuff you may want to use the cover that's provided this is fantastic cover right here it's really good we'll try and pre anarchy this scorn captain on the right hand side hopefully he puts up a trap he's put up a trap he's cooperated that's always nice right heal and rift in double cappage zone so they're ticking away that's good debuff I'm going to get rid of it once I get two cap points and then go and then we'll go up top, jump on the blight ball things, which these, by the way, change to stepping stones after this damage rotation, which is kind of cool. Do a surge switch up here. This opens up DPS, and I want to ask people as well. Do you think high ground will work in this? Technically, I'm higher than him, right? Imagine if a high ground sniper works on this. Probably shouldn't be telling you all my secrets and my ideas, but just think about that for a second. What if that works? 
when we're doing damage damage like this to him because we're higher than him and it's the only instance i can think in the game where i've been higher than a boss like that's important that matters because high ground's a, a neat little perk but it doesn't work with aerial abilities i don't think it doesn't work with aerial ab abilities from like icarus dash and stuff and i don't think it works with heat rises I don't think it works like that, so be interested to see if it does work. But I haven't, I obviously I haven't tested that. I'm just, as I say, fairly crafting that particular thing because there is there is some high ground snipers. I've got one. It's just whether it's worth giving up a enhanced supremacy, which kinetic tremors does so much damage. It's in it's insane how much damage it does. I will say that potentially. This build could do more damage than what it does now. And the way of upping its damage would be to add Radiant in there. Right, but we can't just add Radiant like that. We need a solar weapon. Well, the way around it is to use a solar sniper. Now, there's one solar sniper that, it, that did catch my attention, and I was nearly going to do it. And that was going to be Icolos. It's a solar sniper. It would, it would proc Radiant, which therefore would buff anarchy's damage and itself that would technically be more damage than anarchy with enhanced suprem supremacy because you'd be getting radiant on top of your damage not that we need much more damage i mean we're melting him as it is but adding just radiant to it or maybe like i say running a solar sidearm i've seen people do that run a solar sidearm to get quick consecutive precision shots to hit radiant and then do it like that you could do it like that as well. So that is another way of sort of maybe up and damage. So we're going to see if he puts down his trap. He's not wanting to. Like I said earlier, if you're within two to three meters of them, they have different moves and one of them's a stomp. So he wanted to stomp rather than put down a trap. Which, as I say, is no good to me. Because I'm just wanting to put a trap down. Uh, we're just going to cap one. Because one is all we need anyways, really. And we're well ahead of our damage curve. So we're just going to go up top. Hopefully the pulse nade hits. It did. You super. Cancel it off because he's immune now. And then we'll go back down. One key note. Once you're doing this skip him on the plates... When you're up there, get off. Because wizards are going to be spawning behind you. So there's a slight risk there. But if you jump off right away, then it's no problem. There is going to be scions, which is actually... We can utilize these scions for ammo farming. See, what you need to understand about this boss fight, it's marvelously designed that... Plate 1, 2, and 3. Only 2 and 3 despawn. The plates I'm on now. So I was just on plate 2. This is plate 3. They despawn. The key thing to know about it is that the ammo despawns along with the plates. Yeah? But plate one ammo doesn't despawn because that plate doesn't despawn at all. So, this is how you can farm ammo up to do more damage to him. Doing a plate at a time. Emptying your sniper ammo, going back for more and rinsing and repeating. Waiting for pulse nades. If it was on a solar, then you're waiting for your melee, slash so fire to then debuff him and stuff like that, like I did on that run. And you can just up your damage so much by just doing that. Rather than rushing all the plates, you don't need to do that. You definitely don't need to do that. And there's ammo on these plates, and it's going to despawn, so it's a waste. So you may as well go back for it. If, you know, you may as well, even if you're trying to do it quite quick, you may as well just go back for some ammo and then go at it again. Never do three plates back to back to back. Maybe two at a push, back to back, but not all three, because you're wasting so much ammo on the floor if you do that. It's not like you're saving it, it's gonna despawn, so you may as well use it. So we've settled just to kill him at this point, because getting tired of him not putting a point. We'll get rid of debuff. We got a nice little help. Boop there, that's fine. We'll get to DPS location. 
Um, we're not going to super. We're just going to do two anarchy and sniper. We were getting hit there to our right, which I was a bit worried about. But that was fine. So this is where I suffer. That's the mistake. Did you see the mistake I did? I have actually lost a full plate of damage because of this. So like I said pre previous, if you're going to do damage up there, make sure you're stepping off right away. The trouble why I didn't step off right away is because I thought I wasn't going to hit that soft cap quick enough, but I ended up doing so. So it, it's meant that we've lost a plate of damage, but does it matter? It doesn't, because the damage, the HP he's got left, we're going to do in two plates anyway. So it didn't, it didn't hurt the run, but it is something to take note of. If you're standing up there, even if you don't hit the soft cap, step off a second earlier. It should be the rule that you follow if you're going to do these strats. Just step off a second earlier. So we've got everything. We've got all our abilities. I think I don't if no I don't think I supered on this phase. We need to put in quite a bit of damage because I don't want to have to do like go back down the bottom. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do, put in as much damage as we can, right? And then we're gonna settle for using a super on the next plate, and then that way save ammo for final stand. I could have done it the other way. I could have done it where we use super on final stand and ammo here instead. It didn't really matter because in the end, it's, it, it's still going to be the clear. So we're ammo, ammo hunting. I could have done with a bit more heavy for final stand, but that wasn't too much of a problem. Because we need two anarchy for this plate. So that leaves us with four. So we're going to have four shots, which is actually quite a lot of anarchy, actually. You know, two shots last quite a while. You know, so it's more than what you think it is. Does it need a magazine buff? I don't think it does. I haven't used Anarchy this week and last week quite a bit because it used to be 26. I don't think it needs to go back to 26. It is getting a buff, I think. GLs are getting a buff, of course. But I don't think they need to buff its magazine size again. Just leave it at 6. I think at 16 is fair. It's fair. You can't say that's not fair. You know, most GLs like this have around 16 to 18. So I, I think that's fair to have that. And its ammo economy is still really good. It's very valuable in the game. So we're just letting Anarchy finish off the boss. Boss is super weak now. Finish off with some sniper ammo. But that was a solo run for this on Ark. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.